hi to you at Noel Shore, and I just want to offer condolences to, of course, Ricia and Rodrigo on behalf of my family, the Noels, the Shores, and of course the Rufin families from right here in Birch Grove. Your dad, Richard Charles, Chetty to all of us, was so important to our family. Everyone loved him, from Uncle Dennis, obviously, Tanti Liv. He was one of her favorite people, and Uncle Francis. So from all of us, I just want to say that Chetty remains in our heart as a pillar of this community, a man who believed in God, loved his family, was respectful to everyone. I think your dad might have been the first person that I thought was such a handsome man. I was like, oh my gosh, who is this man? And it turns out that he was also sweet and kind and just someone who cared for others. And there were moments when I saw him when he visited uh, New York, you know, he came for Uncle Martin's funeral. We had great conversations. And I'm so thrilled that last April, right here in St. Matthew's Church, I got to say hello, I got to hug him, and that he knew that our family truly loved him. So major condolences to the Charles family, again, especially to Rodrigo and Ricia, and all our love to you during this mournful time, and we will miss Chetty for the rest of our lives. We thank you for being here on with us, a special thanks to you. So you back a little bit. Is the representative from the city of here? Hello, 
without sin, let him throw the first stone. When you point the finger at someone, there are four fingers pointing back at you. His path of loneliness towards the end of his life was thankfully alleviated by a heaven sent granddaughter, Nisha, and his brother Carl. Nisha should be highly commended for the excellent care she took of her grandfather. He was very fond of her. He was very, he was very fond and proud of her. He told me, he told me so. He loved his church. Now he's thankfully at peace with his siblings, Maria, Monica, Eric. No more stress, depression, or loneliness. He is beyond the sunset. Nothing can harm him now. Dress in peace, my friend. And Thank you. And I will now read a tribute that was sent from Christopher Whiteman. Richard was like a father and friend. Always looked after me when I came up to Birch Grove from West the weekends from school. I have lots of fond memories going to the beach, the river, the airport, and the gardens, and, and motorcycle, motorcycle rides. rides. I, I shall, shall miss, miss you, my friend, and adopted dad. dad. May, May you rest, rest peacefully in the, in the arms, arms of, of your maker, maker until we meet again. So this was from Christopher Whiteman. Okay, the city, you're not here yet, so we'll move on. Another, Another tribute, tribute from, from Sandra Belma John. One of the kindest gestures from Richard and his wife Linda was during the coup in Grenada in 1983. They opened their home as a safe haven to my family. We, we hid there, there for about a week, along with my mother, Sylvia Bell, and, and my then one-week-old son, Morris Bell. So, so I would like to extend my sincere condolences to Risia and Rodrigo Charles and all the other relatives, including Billy Lewis. This was from Sandra Bellamo in the UFC. And now we have a tribute from Philip O'Farrell, one of his neighbors who unfortunately is not here so it will be displayed on the screen. Good day, my name is Philippa Fari. And I'd like to start by offering my condolences to Rizia Rodrigo and all the other family members and friends of the late Mr. Richard Charles. Mr. Charles and I are neighbors, and as a child growing up, I would always be at his house. I look at him as an uncle or even a father figure at times. He was a very humble, easygoing, friendly person, 
always neat and clean, and always wanted things to be done at his perfection. Mr. Charles had a lot of fish cakes. Sometimes he used to call me and say, when you're making fish cake, don't forget me. He had a lot going to church on Sundays, and I loved going to church as well. So I used, that used to be my ride every Sunday morning, going to church. As I reached in the vehicle, he would ask me, what's the latest in the place? What's going on? So I always had have a report for him. Shelly, we will miss you dearly. Your time and walk on this side is over. We are sad to say goodbye to you, but God and his angels are happy to welcome you home. Rest in peace until we meet again. I would like to leave this little note for the family. It says a message from heaven. I have not left you. I am simply enjoying the next stage of my life. So please do not cry. Rejoice in the fact that I am happy. Remember that I will always love you. And smile because one day we shall meet again. Today, but God is good. We're moving on. Is Miss Agnes Forrester? Are you here? Then we we'll listen to a pre recorded tribute from his brother, Martin Charles.
Thank you, Uncle Martin, for your tribute. So we are still going on. Miss Agnes Shaw, sorry. Miss Agnes Forrester. Not here. CTEC. Okay, please come forward. Present good afternoon to every one of you. I was not supposed to be speaking on behalf of CTEC, but given that the person who was supposed to speak is not here, I just volunteered to speak on his behalf. So if you find that I go off key, you would have to excuse me. Richard Charles, a member of the organization that's been named CITEC. And for the benefit of persons who do not know, CITEC is a business operating on the Morris Bishop Highway in St. George, Grand on St. George gas station, and convenience too. I have known Richard for the last 37 years, and all I can say about him is what is positive. He was a very, very positive person. He served in the organization as vice president for many years. And the contribution that he had made is partly and largely responsible for the progress that we have made over the years. CTEP started from scratch and has grown to be a very profitable organization, spreading its wings soon from now, very soon from now, we shall be operating a station, we will be building a station at Grenville, St. Andrews. Prospect, is it Prospect? In Prospect area, Prospect Park area. And a lot of that kind of development, we owe it to the contribution that Richard had made or the foundation that he had laid. To find some words to describe him, from my interaction with him, over the years, I can use words like honest, peaceful, very humble, and of course, give it to him. He was really, really a good gentleman. He was a good gentleman. So, he is gone, but we will remember him as long as the organization, because it's at that level we know him, as long as the organization continues to prosper and the organization continues to exist, he would not be forgotten. And his contribution will never, never go un unpaid. So he's been called to rest today and what I can say is that we wish him a perfect place with the angels and saints in heaven. I have no doubt, given the man that I know he is, that he'll be having the mercy of the Lord. So may his soul rest in peace, and may the souls of all the faithful, to the mercy of God, Rest in peace. Amen.
Okay, well, thank you. CTEC representatives, this has brought us to the end of the tributes. We have a little space. If someone wants to come and say something, we can give you two minutes so you could come forward, even though your name is not on the program. We can still fit you in. I am not giving a tribute, but just to let those of you who don't know me, you might hear me saying, Uncle Richard. He is not, a, he was not my blood uncle, but my real uncle. I knew Uncle Richard since I was about three years old. At that time, I was living with his aunt and uncle. And I was a little child in the foot running up and down. I always remember his aunt had a shop right in Bodge Grove Junction Day. Those of you who will remember Mr. Cyrinos and Miss Cyrinos, I was a little girl that used to be running up and down in their feet. And I remember every Saturday, Uncle Richard or Uncle Carl will come pick us up and we spend Saturday night in Beauregard. If we didn't go on the Saturday night, Sunday morning, he will come with his Holden car. You remember those cars they used to call the Holden cars? That was the car Uncle Richard will come with and pick us up and bring us to church. And I grew up with Uncle Richard. And trust me, he's in my heart. And I will miss him dearly, especially when Sunday comes. I wouldn't tell you why. But if I don't miss him any day, I miss him on Sundays. The first time I shed some tears, because when I called my daughter in America and I said, girl, Uncle Richard died, she started to cry, I break down. But Sunday, it pierced my heart. I will miss him, I will miss him. But he is in a better place. He is in a better place. I must tell Jesus, all of my trials I cannot bear this burden alone in my distress he promised to help me he all my care and sorrow to share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, so I cannot bear this burden alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone.
I didn't come here to do that. But I must do something for Uncle Richie. And I thank God for the strength because I was saying, Lord, give me strength. Is anybody else here to do a tribute? Ms. Forrester, I understand both Ms. Forrester and the real representative from CTEC, they are on their way, but we know. If we can get a little soothing song, probably we could do that and hold on if by the next five minutes they're not here, we'll have the eulogy. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It would be a bit remiss of me if I did not take this opportunity to say a few words on the passing of Richard. I grew up in Birch Grove as a young boy, and I had known Richard for many, many years. He used to come by my mom's shop she was known as Miss Tracy. Most of you probably, or some of you would know, Josephine Tracy Forrester in Birch Grove. And um, Richard used to 
visit that shop from time to time, himself and his brother and others. And one thing stood out in my mind regarding Richard. He took very great care of the car or cars that he drove. They were immaculate, always had them clean as a whistle. And he was indeed very proud of his vehicles. I remember him also too at the Pearls Airport where I worked at one point in time. And again, he reminded me of an individual who was very professional, very dedicated to his duties and his responsibilities, and he had a great relationship with all staff at the airport. I remember at times he would come up to the air traffic control area and um, just hang out with the staff up there, getting to know how airplanes are controlled in the air. He had that passion also too. I remember at one time we were joking, saying to him, when these aircrafts take off, we hope that you don't take off the same way with your Holden. But um, Richard was always of great fun, great joy to be around, and um, you can always count on him as a dear and dedicated friend. I know that he will be missed by his family, friends, and the community of Birch Grove. And uh, he made his contributions, he made his mark in society. I trust that as his soul journeys to his maker, that he would find peace and tranquility as he reaches the destination and have to give account to his maker. And I'm sure that account would be a good and pleasing one to his creator. Richard, we'll miss you. And we trust wherever you are that you'd find we meet again. We wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Forrester. Ms. Agnes Forrester. To my uncle, based on the memories of his children. Richard Charles was born on March 30th, 1941, to Emmanuel and Madrilla Ailey Charles. Richard was Ailey's little driver. It is no secret that he enjoyed driving and was fascinated with cars and trucks up to the time of his death. He was a fun-loving child 
and loved playing with his sisters, Monica and Maria. The three were inseparable, making chores like gathering wood in granite tank an adventure. Richard would drive the girls down the granite tank road in a go-kart called a taxi, filled with wood, with Maria using one piece of wood to act as brakes around the corners while Richard steered them down the hills. And this is just only one example. As a child, Richard attended the Brudge Grove RC School, and in recounting his time there, he always commented on the fact that he was often scolded and corrected by teacher Eric, who was not only his teacher, but his eldest brother. As an adult, he briefly tried his hand at teaching, but having had that driving bug from his early Granatang adventures with his sisters, he opted for becoming a taxi driver, and later a driver for the university, a truck driver, and lastly, a heavy equipment operator and owner. As a taxi driver, he was made the president of the Taxi Association on many occasions, and he was the founding member and former director of the CTEC, a business owned and operated by the Taxi Association. Farming was another of Uncle Richard's pet peeves. Maybe we can say that he was a big farmer, for if the saying that any time a big farmer dies, God gives you plenty rain is in fact true, then as we all know, we have been having heavy rains since his, since his passing. It must be noted here also that the very last thing he did was to go to the land where he fell and had to be hospitalized until his passing, a cliche in itself since that is where he first met his wife, Linda, at a hospital. Their meeting and falling in love was a story of a romance novel. In 1969, while a patient at the Princess Alice Hospital, Eleanor Fleming introduced Uncle Richard to a nurse at the hospital, who was also a part of his care there. That nurse was Linda Dabrio. In 1970, shortly thereafter, he got married to that nurse, Linda. They shared a mutual love for vehicles, her love for riding bikes, and him, the taxi driver. They traded lessons, riding and driving, and doing these fun things together. Their union saw the birth of their two children, Ricia and Rodrigo. As a couple, they had their challenges, yet they were always there to support each other and their children. It is interesting that in this last year of his life, every time his mind slipped, as it did almost daily, he spoke of Linda and wanting to be with her or of some event that they were a part of together. Uncle Richard can be described as the consummate driver, driving taxi at the Pearls Airport and then later at the Point Salines Airport, all the while growing the trucking business to to transport bananas for St. Andrews to the geese boat as part of his farming business. His love also dr for driving also saw him investing in American cars. He was well known for his Chevy cars, with the most famous one, the Caprice, being referred to as the Grand Plain, given the size of his engine and speed. It is this same Caprice that was used to rescue many of his friends when their vehicles broke down, towing them to safety. The driving bug saw him experiment with the owning of a bus at one time. He famously told the story of his father always saying, buses always bus, only to have that experience in actuality. He recounted watching the bus make several trips one Christmas Eve only to have the bus conductor come to him at the end of the day, sadly telling him that he made a grave mistake. He gave away $20 bills as $1 bills for change to passengers in the twilight hours. Uncle Richard was mad as hell, but laughed and said, time to sell that damn bus. And that his, Eman and that his daddy Emmanuel was correct, bus does bus. 
His driving adventures saw him driving in the most arduous of conditions, including driving down without brakes down the Granitan and through the streets of St. George's. This is a skill he taught Linda, Ricia, and Rodrigo over the years. What and how to handle a, ve a vehicle in the most daring of conditions. As a matter of fact, Rodrigo was taught to drive before he could actually see over the steering wheel of the car and to operate heavy equipment before finishing school. So it is not surprising that he has that driving bug today. And don't think it stops there. Rizia was taught to operate the Caterpillar backhoe. There are countless of persons in this community who got their first feel for driving cars, bikes, trucks, and heavy equipment from him. Uncle Richard also loved to talk. He would talk to anyone willing to listen about everything and everything, sparing no details. Maybe it is his driving and flair for talking that somehow got him on cross paths with Dr. Charles Monica of the St. George's University and with whom he struck up a friendship and partnership that resulted in many adventures. One of the most memorable being this one time when the plane carrying the cadavers for SGU was late in coming into Pearl's airport. Uncle Richard organized the taxi men and all drivers he could find around Grenville to line up along the runway with their headlights on so that the plane could land after dark so that the school would have the cadavers in time rather than facing a huge delay. Remember, in those days, Pearl's Airport had no night lights, therefore all landings and takeoff were during the daylight hours. During the days when the university had the private plane piloted by Tom Gallagher, Uncle Richard frequently took Rizia on flying adventures to St. Vincent, at times even letting Rizia get a feel for flying the plane. I believe those who know her well knows that the love of plane hopping is still there and now understands why. Another of Uncle Richard's love was country music. Some of his favorites was that of Loretta Lynn, Conway Twitty, and Kenny Rogers. And too many times you would hear the gambler playing in the Chevy car while he was driving with him singing along. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fall them, know when to walk away and know when to run you never count your money when you're sitting at the table there'll be time enough for counting when the dealing's done every gambler knows that the secret to surviving is knowing what to throw away and knowing what to keep because every hand's a winner and every hand's a loser And the best that you can hope for Is to die in your sleep Those were his favorite words And he knew them by heart And maybe in actuality That was his mantra For he lived and died by those words Uncle Richard believed in God And remained true to his church He was an ardent worshiper of this church St. Matthew's R.C and always boasted that this was the best church in Grenada. He was a member of the Men's League and participated in various church activities. He was also a very sociable person, and I guess many persons may have various stories and versions of his many exploits and escapades. But despite his shortcomings, Uncle Richard supported his family and all their undertakings, particularly with his children's education. He was proud of their achievements and spoke constantly of same to anyone who would listen. He was kind and caring and always ready to listen and give advice, even if you didn't ask. He loved life, he loved adventure, and was indeed a risk taker. Uncle Richard came, he made his mark, and now he is gone. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Amen. Okay, so this has brought us to the close of the first part. We now invite the family members 
to go and have your final viewing. Family members, it's now to go to. Okay, Miss Agnes is here, so she's going to extend her beautiful voice to us. Well, Uncle Richard, I hope it is well with your soul wherever you are now. <laughs> my song is, It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendant my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot you have taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul. It is well. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The drum shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well. So it is well, it is well with my soul. Thank you. And so I really believe it is well with Uncle Richard's soul. He had the opportunity to receive Jesus before he died. I remember going to the hospital with Father Dan when he anointed him and he received communion. It is well with his soul. So we now invite the family members to have your final viewing, after which we begin Holy Mass.
So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might be a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness in his death, so shall we be united with him by the likeness of his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, Richard shall put on Christ, and the day of Christ's coming, that he be clothed with glory through Christ. Through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. 
The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. The going look like a disaster. The leaving us like an annihilation, but they are at peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hopes were rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction. Great will be their blessings. But God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out as sparkle run through the stubble, so will they be. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be the king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth, those who are faithful will live with him in love, for grace and mercy awaits those he has chosen. The word of the Lord.
the life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So that, alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bow, bend before me, and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate. They are dead. But anyone who is this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you,
taking us on the Saturdays. In the blue tigers, and the black tigers, which we're about to see this grace out. Today we're at the end. As I said at the beginning, to celebrate the life and the times of the child Charles. It is a song to them. That's the Lord is going to be this great year. How prepared are we? Now, when we come from funerals like this, what does this remind us? As we look at this aspect, as we all have it here, what does this remind all of us? The emptiness of human existence. The emptiness of life. But life is not empty. But it is leave right now. Leave on this and leave to the future. And that is the whole thing we are celebrating today. We have the past to kind of here to remind us that the John will teach us two times we apply the standards, building baptism, and also praying for girls. I was the meaning of that. The baptism is a reminder that we are born in grass. To the peace of our original sins. And when we die in Christ, just like Jesus died to resurrect, we also resurrect with Jesus. So the clear picture for those of us who are Christians that we are celebrating because we believe in the resurrection. If we are not talking about the resurrection, it makes no sense if we are here. But what is this about us to understand that even in this moment, it's a very, very painful moment, watching Charles Richard at the end part of his days here at the end, the soldier here at the end. It's to begin to ask myself some fundamental questions about how this life can begin and can end sometimes. Strong fellow, happy fellow, cheerful one, who is always looking out for Others. And always in church. And we just surprised me. It was still Sunday long. I was busy looking at the sitting position that I was not there. But something told me. Charles is sitting in the best position we can. But what matters is how well we can be for our life. It was the only way to let us understand and open your last sentence. The life of the ventures, the ventures are in the hands of God. The thing is, the life of Richard Charles is not the hands of God. It's not the hands of people. It's not the hands of mindset. It's not the hands of what we think of who is good or who is bad. But in the hands of God. And because it is in the hands of God, it is a sign and a clear picture that all that we should be living for. Is that at the end of our social year of us, where are we going to end? Where will our life be? In the house of God or where else? Now, Paul went for that in the rest of the second reading from the letter of the Lord to the Romans to tell us that where we die or we are alive, we belong to God. God is our creator and He's our possessor. And we should always appreciate the fact that our souls, our souls in God, our souls in heaven. And that is why this heaven is the eternity that we should be looking for and praying for. Today, as we pray for the repose of Charles, Richard, it becomes a point of contact or a point for all of us to reflect and think about our lives. Are we going to be in a position where we can be so proud to 
and times, part of the most holy, through your love and son, Jesus Christ, your love for whom we are things, whom you sent us as our Savior and our Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and God of the Lord, fulfilling all human name before you are the Lord, he stretched out his hands as an angel of passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so the angels of all saints declare your glory as to one voice.
the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, we say for the sins of the Lord, and have us sinners. Lamb of God, we say for the sins of the Lord, and have us sinners. Lamb of God, we say for the sins of the Lord, and have us sinners. Behold.
our school committee received the school from President Tim's God of the Sky. Sense of God, come to this day, come to meet him, thank you, Lord. Receive his soul and present to God. The Christ who called him, take it to himself, and may angels give it to him on his side. Receive his soul and present to God. Give him eternal rest of God, and your life shine on him forever. Receive his soul and present to God. Father, into your hands. We are confident that all who have died in Christ, He will be raised to life on the last day and be with Christ forever. We thank you for all the blessings you give Him in this life. So show your Father we care for all of us and the fellowship with His powers for the saints in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Welcome our brothers to paradise and help us to